if a man one can sit here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Amen. 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 The Lord is good. Huh? The Lord is good. <laughs> Can you say that all the time? All the time. We've believed it all the time. All the time. The Lord is good. All the time. Amen. Amen. That means the Lord is good all the time. In the past, it was good. Today is good. Even the future will be good. Amen. Amen. He is good. Amen. Amen. I thank God uh, for this opportunity He gave us today. As everybody here come to listen to His word, I also thank to the community of the church who gave me the opportunity today to speak about the God's word. During I was thinking about what I can pray or I can preaching to the church, the Lord showed me a very big topic. I don't know even we can finish this today, but let you try, but this topic is about the breaking stronghold. Amen. Amen. Breaking the power of stronghold in your life. Who we'll know that this world is ruling by stronghold? Church, we have to be aware about this power because the Bible is full of that, that we are ruling by stronghold. Amen. Mm -hmm. And only when we understand the power of stronghold in our life, in our family, in our city, then we are also, this is the key of our victory. These three chairs which we are making here today, it represents the stronghold in our life. As they are free chairs. You have to make the stronghold are sitting now here. We will cover it up. You will see which stronghold are currently sitting here. Which are manipulating our life. Amen. Amen. Let we, we read first in Judge 6. Judge 6, we chat, uh, chapter 1. Who has? English can read Jude 6, chapter 1, verse 1, first verse 1 until verse 6. Judges chapter 6, yes. verse 1 to 6. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hands of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midian, Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds, which are in the mountains. So it was whenever Israel had sown. Midianites could come up also Amalekites and the people of the east will come up against them then they could and come against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as gaza and leave no sustenance for israel neither sheep nor ox nor donkey for they will come up with their livestock and their tents coming in as numerous as locusts, both they, they and their camels were without number, and they could enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then uh, we will jump now from verse 11 until 16. The same verse. 11 until 16. 11 to 16. Mm -hmm. 
Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terrapine ter ter tree, which was in Ophra, which belonged to Joas and Abitzrite. Abit while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wind's mean press, in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you, might, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Maybe we can stop there first. Okay. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is mighty to save, to, to carry out us. Thank you, Lord, for your power building to your word. Bless this moment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will uh, read it step by step. Uh, first of all, uh, it's about this story about the Gideon. Why uh, this story is very important to understand the power of the stronghold. When we read this story, it was the Israel. When after time Moses was dead, Joshua was dead, many people came, but it wasn't the time where the Israel makes sense. They were praying other gods, and this land that God sent, and the Medanita, the enemy come to destroy. But what did the enemy destroy? They destroyed everything what they built. That means every harvest, what they had, every fruit, what they had. Every time when it was ready to eat, this Medanita came and destroyed. That means as father, you work one year for your money, you work for your animal, but someday when you are you're ready to eat what you prepare, this Medinita came and take it and wrap it. Seven years. The Israel they was very, very poor. They became very poor because of this was the Medina done. Amen. Amen. It was like a spirit which every time came to destroy their goods. Then then that means we have also in our life, I mean, we have in the life situation, you have things you prepare for yourself, you're working hard, you do things, but you don't enjoy what you are working for. Can you understand it? That means there is a spirit which not allow you. This happened in many cases. I mean, in Africa, we have this kind of spiritual struggle. We have gold, we have diamond, but we do not enjoy it. Can you understand? There's a spirit which called spirit of the stronger, which is here to, to destroy what God prepared for your life. It came into your family, in your own. And today we're going to look at it, what it is. Because when we read the definition of stronghold, it means stronghold or is a demonic spirit which do not allow you to achieve God's prosperity into your life. This spirit limits people spiritually, physically, materially, and the reign of a people mindset, family, city, and nationally. Amen. Amen. This means their spirit would which which want to try to reign over us, which want to limit us. There are many areas in our life you don't move forward. Like Israel was, they couldn't move forward because there was every time they want to move forward in our life, there was this maiden that they came, they destroyed what they built. Do you have this area in your life that you say you don't move full forward spiritually? Physical, material. Amen. Amen. We understand there is a spirit 
for the spirit of the devil, which are rain, which forces. Because when we read in, in the phase of 12, it says we are not struggling against flesh or against blood, but we are against power. We have never estimated their power. If somebody has power, you, have, you need also power to fight against it. Can we understand it? They are power who which uh, fight against us. That's why we need power to also fight against them. Amen. Amen. And this was what uh, happened. I can you tell you the story? When the Meditator uh, was in this case, they destroyed the things of Israel and God chose one people, Gideon. He selected, he said, he calling. He calling to came to deliver his folks. To deliver his people, to deliver him from for this sorrow what they had. Then when the angel appeared <coughs> and he called him, Gideon said, "I am. Can God chose me? Amen." Mm -hmm. We can read first, and uh, before we continue, the first point is about the dis about disobedience. The Christian, what was the reason? Gave the median and the power to come to rule up upon the Israel. In the chapter one, we read it was the Bible said that Israel became disobedient. Disobedience. That means they make sins. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every time we sin, we are we are walking in the sins. This gives devil the right to rule over us. Imagine when Adam and Eve sins, what was happened? The devil take the control. That means there is a there is a rule. If you are you are you can choose to be by God, but you cannot choose to be by the devil. You know that. Okay. Some people say, I can I don't I don't want to be by God. I don't want to be by, by the devil. I I don't be the middle. There is no middle. At that time, you are disobedient to God. So I don't want to. God rule my life. In this moment, the devil is coming. And the Bible says, this Israel, they had, they, they built Baal. Baal was like a statue. They was praying. During the day, this praying, the devil got the authority. The, the, the devil got the keys in their life to come to destroy. Sometimes ask yourself, is there thing disobedience in my life? Is some sins which give the devil the key of my life? Amen. Amen. Anyone has said that's been the key. That means in this moment, in this moment, when you can, you start to live in sins, you give the devil the key. Devil, yes, my key. You can come in my life. And when the devil comes, he comes to destroy. Like in Israel, he came. This means that this spirit is why he came to destroy everything what they have. We watch a movie. It was about um, Sandra, it's a true movie. About when my son was saying oh, she's not dead. This girl, or this Sandra, she was raised in a Christian family. When that happened, that the parent makes sins. At that moment, the parent sins. What happened? This daughter left her home, left the family, she gone away. She turned to make water music, to turn to drug. But in this moment, when we were in this movie, they, they say clearly, it was the commentary to say, this daughter said, when I saw what my parent did, I said, I'm not, I'm not a Christian anymore, I'll go. That means the sins of the parent give the devil the right to come to steal. Parents, be careful what you do. You see, can destroy your children. can also destroy the generation of the generation. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is what we read here, God was not satisfied about the situation, what the Israel got through. God was not satisfied about the Midianite that came to destroy Israel. Do you know that God is not satisfied about your sorrow? Do you know that? That about the problem you're asking for, about the devil what's ruined, that God is not satisfied. God wants to save you. God wants that you have to rule. Who know that? Who know that, that God is not satisfied that I'm limited? God is not a God of limitation. God don't want that we stay in the same place year of year. God wants to move forward. That's 
was in Israel, when God saw that Israel has so, suffered year of year, then the Bible said, God called Gideon. Amen. Amen. Say, God called me. God called me. Say, God called me. God called me. Is somebody here want to be called by God? Yes. If somebody want to be called by God, say, God Amen. call me. Amen. God call God me. me. Amen. Amen. In this story, the Bible says, and God called Gideon. Because God was on a satisfaction. Because God said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I have a good plan for your life. I have a good plan. God is not satisfied when the demon come to destroy your life. When you don't move forward. When you always stay in the same place. Like in your health. Like in your problem. God's one that you want to move. That's what God, God called Gideon. Amen. Amen. But the problem, what Gideon was, it's, it's one of the points. It's a mind stronghold. Can you move your mind strong? Amen. When we read in the chapter 50, the people, when, the people, when the angel called a Gideon in chapter 50, what did he say? When the angel called Gideon, he said, mighty warrior. You are a mighty warrior. What did uh, Gideon, uh, Gideon say? I, mighty warrior, I'm the smallest in our family, Christian. And my family is the smallest in everybody. But God called it mighty warrior. When I wrote this, I was shocked. God called somebody mighty warrior, he even won a battle. People call him Gideon, but God called him mighty warrior. That means we have here, we have a name what the heaven calls us. You know that? Who know that uh, we have a heavenly name? Can we understand it? Gideon never fought, never make a fight. But when the first time the angel met him, he called him mighty warrior. That means it, it, in his life, it always had a destination to be a mighty warrior. But he never knew that. He only what he knew about his mindset, he's the smallest, he's the smallest people. Let the, today somebody, the heaven, reveal you your right name. If somebody here want to know his heavenly name, what the heaven is called you? I mean, when God made Abraham, he gave him another name. He gave him Abraham. Not the, the world is called you Abraham, but you are Abraham. You are the father of multitude. He gave Sarah, mother of nation. Do we have mother of nation here? Amen. Come on, mother of nation. Do we have mother of nation? Amen. Do we have blessing? Know who you are. God called Gideon mighty, mighty warrior. That means his situation where I mean he was the smallest. He was the smallest family, but it was not about what the heaven called him. Every time when the heaven is saw him, he saw this is a mighty warrior. We have to understand how God sees us. I'll give you an example. I mean, years ago, when I was in Africa, I mean, as a little children, when I was six years old, before I came here to Germany, I was six years old, I was playing in the ground, maybe I was with my father somewhere in the jungle to start to shoot some animal. But imagine, in this time, when an angel appears to me, a six-year-old boy, and he called me, what's up, German guy? What I would say? <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, years ago, I'm a six-year-old, an angel appeared to me and said, I'm in the jungle, and the angel said to me, hello, German guy. Six-year-old, what I would say? I am a German guy. What is Germany? I never, I never heard about Germany. The only thing I want to know about Germany is maybe about my neighbor, he's a BMW. <laughs> this, this is the only relation. But I will never... Believe it. You know what I mean? But I mean, the angel, this time with the word, me, will call me German guy. That means God see us behind of mindset. Amen. Behind are we ever thinking. But Gideon, he saw, he saw himself as the smallest. As the smallest of the little, of the old and little. That's why we're talking about the first struggle in our life. 
which limit us is, is the stronghold of a mind. God wants to do behind our expectation. But there is a mind stronger, which was ruled about Gideon, with always talking, you are not dead. You are not dead. You cannot do not dead. You are not qualified enough. You are not strong enough. That's why you are limited. Because there is a mind stronger, which is sitting in your mind. If somebody here wants to remove this stronghold, Today, that I, we, we some today they live, I'm walking a power, walking a life of America. I know who I am. Who you are? Do you know really who you are? Amen. Amen. Gideon, God called Gideon mighty warrior. He never fight. You, you don't have first to see, to believe, but God said, believe you are it already. God called every father of virtue. He never had a child, children. Come on. You, you don't have a children, the people call you father of nation. We say, are you kidding me? That's the devil stronghold and leading us. The first stronghold sitting in our mind. It's the first. First, when we understand to remove this mind stronghold, which limit, limit us. Every time we want to do something, we, we look. Who I am. Pray to the God. Reveal me the name the heaven is called me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let, I want to know what the heaven is called me. Who you are in God's eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Gideon. Then when we continue this verse, God talked with Gideon. He said, okay, I'm calling you. You are, the, you are I'm calling you. I want to give you the power to help. I want to give you the power to help your family. I want to give you the power to help Israel about your situation that you're going through. I want to give you the power. Can you, and then I want to give God. Cause say he gave you the power. <coughs> At that moment when you know God, you have the power. Amen. Amen. You have the power. And God called you, I want to give you the power to set you to set your family free. It's not about to arguing yourself. I am, I am, I am. God, God said, I want to give you the power to fight. But the first fight, you have to fight about your mindset. Then God continue. Okay, Gideon, I call you. You can now fight. Then when Gideon was ready to fight, it's okay. His mindset, that means the first stronghold in, in, in his head was removed. Then it was the second stronghold. You know which kind of stronghold it was? Family. Because the second argument was what Gideon said, my family is the smallest. That means Gideon connected success, it's connected with his family. Your success is not about your family. It's not about where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Everything what we have is about where, what God is. Yeah. Amen. 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 Gideon is saying his power is coming by his family. God said, no, no, no. It's not about that. There is some stronghold we call a family stronghold. Which family keep us down? We are born here, but we don't know what was in the past. I mean, in Gideon family, the family they serve Baal. They force this, the smallest family, they serve Baal. This Baal make this family also small. That means we never know what happened in, in our life. Which stronghold our family was praying? We, know, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, I, mean, I only know a little bit my grandfather. I don't know my great grandfather. I don't know what, what guy he was. Maybe he was a witch and a, 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 a witch master. He, he makes a magic. You don't know. In our life, there's family strong, which hindered. There, there is a family in Germany. I don't know where you know them. It, they call family Rita. The Rita family. They come in TV. Everybody is laughing about them. This family is not in a third generation. All of them are criminal, drug, alcohol. 
The children are going every time to uh, uh, to the prison. The, the grandfather was in prison. The father was in prison. Oh, you know, the children, the new children, the new children are going to prison. Everybody, when they look look at this guy, they laugh about them. But here, if you see spirit, there's a family strong one. There's a strong one will not allow this family to come forward. There's some family strong one which hinder us in our life to make to move forward, to make step forward. That means you, God. Give Gideon the power to destroy. Today you have the power to destroy your family. That you have to reach more than your family reach. Amen. God always wants somebody have to be behind. Don't be stuck in this border. That's why I say there is a family song. Everybody wants want to do something. You just thinking, what are my family? What they do? Okay, I won't do that. But God is calling you for more than that. Do it, somebody's believe it. Amen. You can be more than that. Amen. Your mind reduces us, our mind, our family. Every time we're looking back, okay, my father just do here. I can do not more. Amen. 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 The family strong one. I mean, and Moses, when he was born, he was born in and a family was slain. But he didn't accept it. He go out and God say, okay, I will also give you the power to break it. In this moment, if you don't accept the limitation of what your family is, so God gives you the power to break it. When we read in this story, God said to Gideon, I give you the power to break the bond in the family. You have to think of yourself, which are if things in your family you think is not is something is strange. Look in your family with spiritual eyes. Look at your situation. Say, this is not normal. Ask yourself. That you will see there's a family stronger. And if you do not break it, it will continue generation of generation. Even when you have kids, these kids will have the same stronger. Because the devil. You cannot say to them, devil, don't hear a devil. Don't say, you can say, please go. You have to move to cast him out. The devil not do things when you don't say it. Every time you have to say, leave my family. I mean, I remember in my family, I had all of some strange guys. <laughs> I mean, in Africa, we have we have people. We have people. They are very restrained. Um, when my father arrived in in Africa uh, after a few years, we had in our street. We had a, it was a, 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 a lamp, a laterna. What call the term in English? It's it's a big lamp. It was in, in our house. Uh, a pole. It was a pole. We never noticed. This pole was our never going on. We thought that this pole is breaking, never going on. It was about the house, it was always dark. The first time my father came from, from Europe, after I mean, it was eight years, he came, the first time we saw the light going on. For nothing. You have the power to light on the light in your family. Amen. Amen. To go deep onto the generation. Say, I have the power. Say, I have the power. I have the power. To destroy. To destroy. Family stronghold. Family stronghold. Family stronghold. Family stronghold. In my life. In my life. Amen. Amen. Never accept it. That's what God said to Gideon. You cannot move forward when you're not destroyed. You have to destroy. You can you can fight against this stronghold, but if you're not a fight against this stronghold, it will be the same. Amen. Amen. Our time is moving. <laughs> then we have also another strong one. Nation. Nation strong one. This nation strong one, the first one when you read in the Bible, it was when uh, Daniel was praying. The prayer of Daniel. Daniel 10. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, 
his prayer was kept by a demon in our nation of Persia. He kept his prayer. That's why the prayer never came to Daniel. That with each nation we are living, there is a stronghold of our nation. They are stronghold. I, I, I say it to do so, so everything. You have to know everything. Something. You know about the Nazi, 1933 in Germany. You know that it was a stronghold about Germany with what led the people to do this thing. You know that? Yeah. A stronghold which rule. Every time when you see something, it's going to be able to understand the stronghold. This, you know that there is a stronghold about racism. You know that? Yeah. That the racism is also a stronghold. Yeah. There is nation a stronghold. There, if you see some nation, I mean, if you see a continent, why you not move forward Africa? Do you think it's normal? No. No. If you, I mean, last time when we pray uh, in our prayer um, where we are evening in the night, we, we read about um, this uh, contract it was made about all the continent. They are physical but spiritual. They are national stronghold. There is some sickness in, my, in some country if you see only this one. I mean, if you go in India, People, when children are born, some children are free, have free arms. You see that's often easier. Children with free arms. But it happened only there. Nice. Maybe the, the medicine can tell you now it's about the food, it's things like that. No. There are national trauma which, which are ruling nation. Between things are happening there, they are have the control. Therefore, when Daniel prayed, that there was the Bible said was a stronghold, a verse which kept his prayer. That we in the high dimension, not even here, this stronghold, not this one, but this stronghold. He kept the prayer. Did we sometimes that's why every time when I went in a different country. I always pray, God, I have the authority about this country's nation in the name, the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You have to pray it. This always my prayer. When I was in the US, I say, God, I'm here, but I have the authority about this struggle which are ruling here. Because God gave us the authority. We have the authority about the trauma who are ruling about Germany. Our prayer can stop the racism to stop here. You know that? Amen. To catch this stronghold. Don't, don't say to everybody you are too small. Your prayer can change the world. To bind all the stronghold. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, an angel came. Gabriel came. And also the Michael came to set him free. Angels are waiting for a prayer. Amen. Um, I always say we're making the, the angel unemployed because <laughs> yes, they are just sitting here waiting for us. We have the power, but we don't do it in action. Is somebody here today saying, Today I want to have the control about all stronghold? Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let me stand up. Today we're going to pray that today God will move every strong one about our life. We want you to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. This is your day. God wants to make you limit breaker. God is not satisfied about the limit into your life. Amen. Amen. God is not said. God said as the Jesus, He wanted to live to break every limit. And today, God said that every storm which is sitting here in your life, which rule, should be to remove. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to sing and we're going to pray. Take your time for praying.